<laughs> I used to have this idea that I would be free um, when I was, well, I don't know. I think, that, I, think in, I think there was a time when I thought freedom and control had a lot to do with each other. Somewhere probably around high school, I made a decision that I wanted to go into medicine. I knew I wanted to be a physician. It was a, it was a while before I settled on the specialty of obstetrics and gynecology. I drive to work each day really feeling blessed that I have the career I have, that God has given me a job that's a ministry. I feel like I've got the best job in the world. Morning. All of pregnancy is a lesson in patience and a lesson in flexibility. It, it just teaches me as I watch women experience that, how important it is to live in the moment. I get to walk with women and families through really, really joyful times and through some really challenging times. You know, I get to experience life from the beginning to the moment the baby takes its first breath. I think the problem for, for a long while was that my vision of what was freedom was not in line with what God says is freedom. I, I mean, I had a real turning point at 37. It's about three years ago. I've been in Austin for seven years. Been in practice as an ob for seven years. I had accomplished everything I set out to accomplish. I had a successful career. I was out of debt. And I just hit a point where I realized that I had all this and I was not in the content place I imagined that I'd be. It was a really uncomfortable place to be in to realize that you'd accomplished your goals and now what? You know, now what's next? And then to feel a sense of like a, just a hole, like an emptiness inside as if something was missing and yet not know what that is. As God realigned my values with his values, it showed me places where I thought I was free, but I wasn't yet free. That, that changed everything. Because suddenly there were some areas where I had to take some steps of surrender, imagining that those were gonna lead to more restriction and less freedom, only to find the opposite was true. That was in money, that was in relationship. But I didn't really understand yet what true freedom was gonna look like. So often when I get home from work, I can't wait to get my shoes on and get out on the trail. When I'm running, I hear really radical things from God, and that's where I go to meet Him. I feel like that's the time when He puts thoughts in my head that are really beyond myself, but that's when I get ideas. I think when, when I made a decision that it was time to just go all out and live for Christ that it was time to really discover what it meant to be an offering to Christ, to live my life fully surrendered. It started to get crazy, the things that I would hear. The biggest and most radical thing I've ever heard was, your relationship and your faith are not compatible, and it's time to do something about that. I mean, that was my big breakthrough, was 07. You know, God moved me out of a relationship, convinced me and convicted me that that was not honoring to Him, and it was time to, to lay that down. The second most frightening thing I've ever heard God say um, had to do with my finances. You can't go and look at another culture and not do this compare and contrast of like, this is what they have, this is how they live, this is what I have, and this is how I live. There are times when I would just sit in that and it would just break me. And I just realized that it's only by God's grace that I have anything more than they have. It's not because I'm entitled to it or I deserve it. And even if I say, well, yeah, but I earned it or I worked for it, then I would hear in the other ear, but I gave you the ability. I gave you the opportunity. I gave you the talent. I gave you the funding. I gave you the resource. I gave you the education. It's like, what do you have that I haven't given you? I was on a run and I just in a conversation with him, just thinking about how might I change in response to what I had just seen, what I had just experienced. I'm just running and I hear God say, I want you to work like a doctor and I want you to live like a nurse. 
So I started thinking, well, sure, I could live on half my salary. And then I started thinking, well, I could live on a quarter of my salary. And I just kind of froze in that and started thinking, well, about a quarter of my salary is probably about what the average nurse is making. I basically just took my salary and I just sectioned it off. And I said, well, this is, a, this is a, what a nurse would make. And then the remaining three quarters is his. And I felt like I said, that's right. That's what you share. I'm not gonna lie, it took some time getting used to living on a budget again. I hadn't really had to stop and think about how I was spending my money for a while. I don't feel like God is only asking me to spend and live within my means, but I think he's also talking to me about how I save. I mean, I've been saving for retirement pretty generously and investing a lot of money. My goals were to retire at 50 and to retire, retire with a certain amount of money, to live at a certain lifestyle. You know, I lost six figures in an investment, and, and at that point, I felt like, you know, I, had a, I was telling you that's when I had a lot of peace, and I had a lot of peace because I felt like God was saying, why are you saving so much money? I felt like God wanted me to, to save to a lesser degree as well, and to be much more generous with my money by sharing it now. When I have a choice about whether to save or whether to share, and I get to bless somebody, often behind the scenes, and, um, and see the way that it's impacted their life, and the reality is, it feels right. It's very satisfying. satisfying life and I feel like that hole that I had three or four years ago that I wondered what is it and how do I get it filled has been filled to overflowing and I feel like it fills me up and then it pours out to others around me in a way that I, I hope I bring a lot of joy to people's lives and that joy I wouldn't have to give if he hadn't first given it to me. So...